I've been working again recently with my all-time favorite reactor device. Actually, it'd be more accurate to say this is top five of my all-time favorite musical software applications ever, anywhere, anytime. It's called Motion Clusters. It's part of the uh, reactor user library. Here's the page for it. Here's what it looks like when you download and open it. Motion Clusters is here. It comes bundled with steam pipe, which is, of course, a factory reactor synth from way back. A physical modeling synth capable of really wonderful range of natural and unnatural sounds. Motion Clusters is, I think most people would call it a MIDI sequencer. Instead, I refer to it as a synthesizer for MIDI note data. Its use is right out of the box, basically like a sequencer. And so sounds that go well when sequenced are ideal for it. And Steampipe comes with many of those. The first thing you need to do when you get it is to go to the properties, click on the, on the instrument here and click on the connect tab. And under MIDI in, activate either all or your MIDI keys in MIDI in. And MIDI out should already really be set to steam pipe, but if it isn't, click on that. And then do the same thing, clicking on the background here so that you're in the master ensemble. And activate the same thing, your MIDI keys and steam pipe. Once that's done, you're still not hearing anything because you see this highlighted button called gated. What that means is you have to press a key to start it rolling and the minute you let go of the key it stops rolling. It also sets the pitch for whatever's happening. So so it's almost like an arpeggiator except that it, it only responds as far as I know to monophonic input. There are many snaps both uh, on the master level and the individual instrument level. To go through them most efficiently, my opinion is you should click on this gated button and go back to properties under function and snap isolate this so that you can have it off no matter what snap you go to that way when it's off. It just plays by itself without you needing to hold any keys. So here it is rolling along. So if I click on anything else, it just automatically plays. Let me give you a quick overview of how this works. It's kind of like a guitar in that there's a separation between the events triggering a note being played and what the notes themselves are, like holding down a chord with one hand on a guitar and not playing anything, but then using your other hand to play in a particular pattern um, and keeping the pattern going while you change chords with your other hand. So the mode is the plucking hand and the notes down here would be the chords held or the, the notes fretted. The notes being played in the mode section here the reason it's called a mode is because there are three different modes. I'm going to let you explore clusters and static. The one that interests me is motion, because that's the one in which the notes simply flow along. And the thing that controls how, they're, how they flow is essentially a bunch of synthesizer-like controls. We have a choice of a variety of different waveforms, which will be used to scan through or play through the number of voices which are set here. And voices in this case doesn't mean synthesizer voices, it means the number of fingers that will be activated to create note triggers. If we let this thing roll along in saw mode, you can see, I think, that this the, uh, the pattern of triggers is kind of saw-shaped. And what's happening is that as those triggers reach the bottom, they're crossing a line that says, okay, yes, make a noise. You can offset that so that they, they never hit the bottom line and therefore you never hear a sound. It's like an LFO, certainly a, a slow moving waveform. Saw inverse, 
pulse. They all sound pretty much the same in all these default settings. And then there's random, and you notice that in the random, not all of these events do hit the, the line, so it might make sense to change the offset so that more of them do hit the line. I've created many banks of snaps simply set to saw or sign, but that's the basic idea behind this. There's a, a wave, an LFO-like wave running through here, changing the triggers, and we can use synthesizer controls and other controls here related to LFOs and some related to more to synthesizers to change the way this happens. For instance, beats per minute, four fifths, four thirds, 15 thirds. So you can get very fine grained control of the rate of the wave. You can also, as I said, control voices, the number of fingers, All the controls up here control what's going on in this table. Length is an interesting one. I would say that it controls the distance, the spacing between the triggers, which is independent of the rate, but it sounds as if you're changing the rate, or it can sound. Wave is going at the same rate, but the distance between them is getting progressively smaller until you get them all happening at the same time. Up to times that are longer than the, the cycle of the wave itself, so you start to get interesting patterns like this one where the, the, the thing splits in half. If you turn this on, you start modulating this wave with another wave, which you can set in here. Sine, saw, saw up, square, etc. If you set it to sine, you're modulating the initial sine wave amplitude modulating it so you can you can see what happens there you're adding a secondary wave to that and then you can control the various parameters of that wave like the phase and the width anyway there's a lot of controls here and there some of them make a great deal of sense once you get the metaphor and others are still kind of mysterious to me after months of using it. The chord side, of course, controls what pitches are coming out of this. And there's, again, a lot of different options. There's four different modes for mapping notes and scales. There's a, a manual one in which you can draw patterns, a couple of different scale types, one called harmonics. I'm not sure how this works, except that it sounds strikingly different, and maybe it pitches everything up an octave or something, but then there's subharmonics, which pitches everything down. In every one of these modes, there are the same controls on this side. The most directly interesting one is probably the transpose knob, even though you can more easily and more controllably set the transposition just with your MIDI keyboard. This is added to this, so if we set that to default at zero, then it presumably matches the note that you play on the keyboard. The next most interesting control down here is the step control, which is setting the, the number of steps between individual notes. So I guess the scale sets which notes are possible. The step size controls the amount of difference between individual notes. So if we set the step to zero, as you can hear, it's playing only the same note you can transpose that note, but no matter how many fingers you've got playing, you're never gonna get more than a single note out of this until you increase the distance between the various steps. So 
So as you can see, as you ramp this up, you start to be covering a much wider range of note values. All constrained by this, by whatever scale pattern you've chosen. One point two five seems to be half steps, stepping one by one through the twelve notes of a chromatic scale. Now I'm, I'm using my keys to transpose, and it's quite interesting to play. Notice that I'm, I'll clack the keys so you can hear how frequently I'm switching between two notes fourth apart, which doesn't reset any of these areas. And what the pitch extinguisher does, of course, is it raises and lowers the transposition of the whole thing by whatever amount you've set. and you can control that with the range slider and rate knobs here, which work just like the rate knobs here. I don't know what this gate knob does. It seems to be I can't notice any difference between having it on or off, but the sequence button makes a huge difference. Basically what that saying is that when in sequence mode, the scale chosen will switch between whatever you've chosen in these two drop downs. So we could have a Ionian and chromatic for instance. And again, you have a rate, a set of rate buttons, so that controls the rate at which the switch happens. When sequence is off, it changes back to the setting in this dropdown, which is the same exact list, but it gives you the possibility to have three different scales. Again, all the same controls over here apply. Invert is another powerful option here. Okay, hopefully you get the idea that there's a lot going on, but the basic principles are fairly simple and very powerful. So I'll just flick through a few presets here and then switch over to, to the ways in which I've modified this ensemble to suit me. Notice that I'm switching motion cluster snaps and not master snaps, so we're keeping steam pipe at the same, uh, the same snap guitar. Now let's listen to some master snaps where creator, Santiago Villanova, a genius in my mind, who I will be forever grateful to, has set up some snaps that include changes to steam pipe. Now, of course, the problem with steam pipe is that no matter how beautiful it is, you can, it's pretty hard to escape the fact that it's kind of like a bomb waiting to be detonated particularly when you switch between steam pipe snaps while motion clusters is running, which of course is what you like to do when you're changing master snaps. The best way to avoid that that I know of is to create your own snaps in which the steam pipe doesn't change. So if you're, if you're planning to record a performance, the best thing is to do it with 
a bunch of snaps where Steampipe doesn't make very dramatic changes while you change the master snap. Another thing you can do, of course, is to snap isolate the gain so that it doesn't go all the way to full on with any particular change. You can also put a limiter in after it. It's tricky, but wonderfully powerful. Now here is the exact same device altered by me in a lot of what look like fairly dramatic ways, but they're, they're not hopefully as daunting in use as they may look. The first thing I've done here is simply to blow up the interface, the GUI for motion clusters, to make things bigger where I thought they needed to be bigger. There's now 15 steps to the pitch sequencer that's why this thing is extending out here and making the whole instrument look bigger. In the mapping area, I've expanded menus with that were drop down so you can see all of them at once and more quickly find the scale you want. I've added a couple of modes that weren't included with the original, but basically not changed anything over here except to, get to make things bigger and for more efficiency when playing with the the controls, which I haven't really changed at all. So up here in mode, everything is still there. As I said, I've just I've simply spread them out a bit. The more important thing that I've done is to add two large racks of IC send modulators. This is a reactor factory option. Uh, these devices that I, I'm using have come from the user library, and I've simply duplicated them so that I have, instead of having one or two, I've got a large number. Each IC device comes with a drop-down menu that is automatically populated with all the instruments inside any ensemble into which you drag them. So I can go in here to Steampipe, for instance, and find every single modulatable control on the Steampipe front panel and select it, and that will send this sequencer device to modulate that particular knob. These step sequencers says eight, but actually they're nine now. I keep adding to them. I've always picked motion clusters as the target. And as you can see, there's a, a huge range of options, but they're, uh, again, a lot more sensible than they might look at, at first. You've got uh, the mode section up here, which is all the knobs in this area. And then as you get down here you get into the notes. So you can reset these things. Unfortunately, you can't change them by snap. What is savable per snap is whatever settings you have for the modulator. But if you wanted to change the target, I've set up each one of these to already have a target. You have to go in here to the drop down and you're changing it globally. So in other words, it would be smart, I think, to save a new instance of the entire ensemble in which you choose different modulators. About a year ago, I uploaded my first version of this expanded take on motion clusters. I recently came back to it and added 12 IC sliders and assigned those to, to other controls, both on steam pipe and on motion clusters. I'll simply play through some of these and give you an idea of what is possible. My first extension of this was simply one in which I set up this kind of simple stepping through scales transposable by with your MIDI keyboard and then of course I made many variations on them based on slight changes to the to the controls so that's what I saved down here. That was the first area in which I started exploring, and here's what, I, what I've saved.
Thank <laughs> you. 